Very good evening to you at home. Good morning from here in Australia where the sun is shining. The Gabba is looking an absolute picture at the moment with just under an hour and a half before play gets underway. It is day three of the Ashes and even though England are under the pump in every sense of the word, we're going to enjoy the next 25 minutes or so and try and bring you some little glimmers of light. Tuffers is mm. with us in London. How are you, Tuffers? How good are you feeling? Good morning, good evening. I'm all right. How are we all over there? Yeah, well, we're, we're OK. We're OK. I'm sitting alongside uh, Stuart Clark, Australian Stewie. bowler who was a winner of the Ashes in 06, 07 and famously a loser of the Ashes in, in 05. We're just, just I, I, oh, it, things that make nice. fe- pe- people feel positive about the yeah. Ashes. Let's, let's, so let's just spend the next 25 minutes talking about the 05 <laughs> Ashes. And I, 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 tough as I just said to, to Stuart, yeah. you, you, you guys must know each other from Middlesex days. Uh, well, yes. We crossed paths, but, but not. i tell you where I know you're from, Tuffers, yes, and, and this is an odd story. But cool. I, uh, John, John Embury was the coach when I was there, and a oh, good friend yes. of yours, uh, yes, Embers. Yes, knuckle. Yeah. And... Um, he invited me around to his house for a barbecue. And, okay, and John, you know, having, you know, where's the bathroom? And I go into the bathroom, and as I shut the door, there's a picture of you on the back door um, giving him the uh, the one-finger salute. And, oh, God, there's toughers. What's he doing there? I turn up <laughs> as I'm going to the bathroom. I turn up in the strangest places, Stuart, I can assure you. <laughs> No, great it's not mate. a lifetime image of you, Tuffers. <laughs> yeah, it's a great mentor. It's not a life-sized image of you, Robert. <laughs> yeah, a great mentor and a great mate of mine, John. Yeah, no, had some wonderful <laughs> days. No, I just don't think we crossed. I think just as I retired, I think uh, yeah. Stuart might have popped in. Yeah. Trick. Well, look, let's talk about Holt. We've got loads to talk about. Oof. It has been a really eventful couple of days, wow. hasn't it? And, you know, England, well, I mean, they're 196 runs behind. Australia have still got three wickets in hand. We are going to see England batting at some stage today, toughers, mm. aren't we? Um, yep. But the question is whether we're going to see Australia bat for a second time. Uh, well, I think, you know, they've got a mountain to climb, haven't they, England? Uh, I think they've just got to try and, as you say, dust themselves down. First of all, of course, we've got to go out there and, and finish off the Aussies, which might be a little bit of a task in itself. Um, but then I think we've got to go out there. We've got to get some partnerships together. We've all been banging on about the lack of preparation. And we've got to try and just treat it as one of the best net sessions you're ever going to have you know, you've got the likes of Cummins Hazelwood, Stark, Lyon, bowling in the nets, let's get in there, let's get some form I want to see a couple of good 50s I want to see a big 100 from someone and then we can take something through and on to to Adelaide, listen I'm not writing the boys off, you never know do you, there's rain around and the guys can go out there and, and smash it and get five, six, seven hundred. I don't know but it's looking unlikely isn't it, so go out there, get your head down, get some uh, get some form, and then take something with you to Adelaide. And I think that's the point, isn't it, for the for the English team? You're 100 percent right. That look, it's it's a long, long way back from here. It's not impossible, and it has happened before, and we've we've seen at different stages teams come out. But I, I still think there's a little bit of life in this week, especially with the new ball. Mm. Um, England were caught short yesterday afternoon, which can happen in Brisbane because of the heat and the conditions that you know, a couple of injuries and things not going away, drop catch or two, and all of a sudden you lose that momentum and everything seems to be going against you. So really important that... you know this first test match and this was the game back to the broad Anson thing that you set your whole series up by playing good cricket in the first game whether you win or lose it's, it's sort of yeah you want to win but you don't want to go out and just get pummeled and the worst thing that can happen for England today is these two put on another 70 or 80 or 100 Ooh. and then you have, you're in the field for a session you come out you have a bat and you're six down and it's just the Australians just dominating you yeah no you, you're, you're spot on Stuart you, you've got to go out and show some fight if you fall down in a heap again, like we did in the first innings, it'll just be game, set and match. Well, it won't be, but I mean, it'll just be Australia cruising down to Adelaide. So much confidence under the new captain, uh, Pat Cummins, you know, Travis Head scoring runs and everything. But get some lot miles into the legs, go out there and, uh, you know, and make sure that you don't get rolled again. Show what you're made of and show some fight. It's as simple as that, Ali. We did a couple of podcasts before the series began for, from out here in Australia with, with the team, with, with Agas and Simon and, and Finney and Zoltz. And, and we talked about, you know, Ash's tales and particularly Gabba tales. So the first two, two episodes are about how the Gabba can set the tone for a series and the Stark can te- set the tone for a series as well. And the kind of things that we highlighted that have gone wrong in the past or the things that can happen is a bit of controversy before the start even. So it might be uh, to do with the toss. It might be to do with team selection. Then a dramatic and eventful 
and terrible start, you know, first ball. And then you get an injury to a key player, which is kind of what we felt like we got with Ben Stokes yesterday. And I'm kind of going through and I'm going, tick, tick, tick. (laughs) We've seen this before. This is the script that we've lived through in the past. Well, no, I think this one's even better. I think think that England have got themselves a seven for for bad things to have started. (laughs) Usually usually you might get a one or a two or a three for, but I reckon there were about seven things that, um, that didn't go so well. Listen, when you go down under... You've, you've not only got to play to your best ability as a side, you've got to take every catch. You've got to not bowl no balls. You've got to, um, you know, you, you've got to make every team selection spot on. You've got to win every toss and call right spot on. It was a litany of mistakes, I'm afraid, this test match. So really, um, you, you've got to just, as you say, move on, m- park this one and go and see what you can do for the other one. Well, I, I agree. It just there's so many things that you you could have. And look, hindsight's easy. You, you look back and you go, I yeah, should have done that. And should, but you just have to be spot on from the moment yep. you turn mm-hmm. up. And yeah. it, it really sets a. There's a reason why we send people to Brisbane in the first test. It's not because you know that the crowds are good up there. It's hot. The wicket is such a different beast to everything else that you see um, in the world, with the exception of maybe Perth. Um, Teams know there's a, that not many teams have got a good record up there other than Australia. So we wheel you up there and we say, yeah, good luck. And then we lock you in a hotel for two weeks as well, <laughs> just to add to that, to make it a little bit harder for you. Um, uh, it, it, it's, not, it's all by... It, it's a bit like... And if you think... Remember they used to send us to Lords, mm. And uh, we used to go there and we just had this great record. It's a bit like that, that mm. governing bodies have gone, mm, maybe we should just put this in our favour. Yeah, because well, yeah. there was a great reluctance, wasn't there? There was, there was some talk about the fact that because Queensland have had these stri- strict quarantine rules, so it meant that broadcasters like us haven't, haven't gone, haven't been yeah. able to, to get into it without the two-week quarantine. Mm. And there was a discussion saying, well, let's make it a little bit easier on the players. You've had a really, really, really tough year. I mean, mm. and both sets of players have as well. Um, you know, so the, the World yeah. Cup in, in, in Abu Dhabi and Dubai, that was really tricky for them. But it, they could have changed the schedule around. They could have maybe given the first test to, to hope or Canberra or somewhere like that and then moved around and then gone to Queensland mm. last but they were determined absolutely fixated on the Gabba as the first test so it seems and, and you know tough as that that plan has come together well absolutely always get as Stuart was saying always stick you, stick you at the Gabba the bounce is big it's, it's unfamiliar um, conditions that you're in. I mean, listen, it's a fantastic place. I'm not having a go at Brisbane. It's a wonderful no. place to go to. But the pitch, and as, as Stuart was saying, the atmosphere and everything like that is very foreign to touring teams, especially when they haven't had any warm-up games. Uh, you know, they've they've been stuck in bubbles and all this kind of thing. To then walk out onto the Gabba, good luck. You know what I mean? Mm. And you need everything to go your way. And it just didn't for England. Listen, um, there were a few positives to take away from yesterday's performance. Let's not be too downhearted on the boys. But looking back on it, things didn't go great, did they? No, they didn't go great. Well, we've, we've said that. We've spent 10 minutes saying that. Let's just try and look at some of the things that, that kind of went OK. Mm. And one of them was Ollie Robinson, oh. who, you know, uh, uh, I mean, we'd had Justin Langer beforehand saying he thought he was going to be a handful bold. Beautifully first up, didn't he? Really amazingly accurate in his in his in the, the kind of lengths he was bowling. But he ha- had a chat at the close of play to the ABC and uh, told them what England's bowling plans were at the start of the day. We spoke about just being really patient, um, bowling to four, four stump really from sort of wide mid crease. Obviously Cummins yesterday did that exceptionally well and that was sort of our plan as well. We felt the Aussie batters left really well, Marnus especially left me really well and felt like I had to push my length fuller to try and get him to play, um, which, was, which was tough. And then Tra- Trav sort of did that as well at the end. So it's, it's definitely a learner for us and hopefully we can, we can learn from that through the series. And was it tough having Stokes uh, limping around? I mean, he's come in, he had the wicket of Warner with the no ball, but then hurt himself as well. Does that hurt you guys a bit coming into to tomorrow? It's always tough when a, when a seamer goes down, especially in these conditions. I think he had something that not, not all of us have. He's got that pace and bounce normally. So it hurts us a little bit, but the, the other boys took the slack and I thought it was a good effort in the end. When you're a young man dreaming of representing England in an Ashes series in Australia and you sort of think of, yeah, the heat, the humidity, the bounce. Now you've lived it. How does it match up to the dreams of a young man to now being the man that's lived it today? Yeah, it was, it's quite surreal for me today. Um, I sort of took a step back at, at one stage to take it all in. 
Would have liked the team to have a better day, but on a personal note, it was a dream come true, like you say. It seemed that you got the length right for Cameron Green. Helps when they don't offer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, we, we are happy with the overall performance in that regard. Yeah, I was. Um, maybe being ultra critical could have pushed my length up a little bit more to, to Davey. I put a cover in sort of in the second session so that I could bowl a little bit fuller to him to try and get the nick and, and the drive. And obviously we got the nick, but unfortunately didn't take that chance. So on another day, maybe push my length slightly fuller and be a little bit more consistent, but overall quite happy with the performance. Just on the, the way that the Australians attacked your spin-up, obviously the, the bowling collective works as a group. How disruptive was it the way that uh, they were able to get at Jack Leach today? Yeah, it looked like a, a game plan of theirs that they'd definitely spoken about. Um, as soon as Leach had come on, they took the attack to him and it makes it hard for us seamers to keep coming back and back and sp spell after spell. So I, I thought the Australians batted really well today. Well, that was Ollie Robinson talking to the ABC. I, I tell you what, um, guys, I find it fascinating how they, he talks about Marnus and Marnus and Trav and David. You know, <laughs> this kind of familiarity, isn't it? You know, yeah, I bet you didn't talk about the England players. <laughs> Did you talk about Freddie and, no, and Kev no. and you, you Vaughan when in, in your day? You know what? We, we actually in the oh six oh seven, we, we actually thought we were too familiar with them, mm. and, and we actually went out of our way not to call them by nicknames, mm. and you know, and, and we, you know. Yeah, yes, we were all we all knew one another, and you know played against one county cricket or whatever. But we we tried to go away from that, and you know well, we're in a contest. You want to win. That mm. that's the bit I I know they're all mates, and I get it, and they play together. But isn't it about winning? Yeah, yeah. back in your day, it was it was about winning, wasn't it? Absolutely. And I think I saw David Warner actually pick up a ball and throw it to one of the England fielders. You know, I mean, it's be <laughs> it really is becoming a very nice, friendly, smiley games, ashes. Game's series, gone. Isn't it? Listen, game's gone tough. As well, there you go. <laughs> I love it. No, it I won't love it. Be I love long. It. It, it. Well, listen, listen. It's all very well and good when you're on top and you've got the other side down, but um, you know, I'm, I'm sure that mm. it will uh, spark up. Uh, you know, if England come back mm. and start having a good sessions and and the Aussies get on mm. the wrong end of a couple of sessions I'm sure that 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 old ass's spirit will come roaring yeah. back <laughs> I thought what was interesting as well was the way that Mark Wood went straight up when he bowled that beamer to, to oh, Travis wow. Head which hit him oh, on the chin oh, I mean it's oh. completely accidental of course it was um, but he went straight up and apologised oh. but just in, in terms of the, the England bowling performance mm. yesterday I mean Stuart, what did you make of Ollie Robinson? I'm guessing it was the first time we've seen him in the Ashes. Oh, I think he hit the nail on the head. I, I thought he was really good. I, I thought for his first time out at the Gabba, no, never experiencing it before, he was good. Uh, yes, being hypercritical, he could have been a little bit fuller. And when he did get it fuller, yes, he knocked over green, shouldering arms. I, if you look at it in the context of how many balls were hitting off stump, his percentage would have been a fraction low. Now, that's not to say he didn't bowl well. He bowled that nice length, hard to score off. But when he got it up there, he induced the edge. Unfortunately, he um, was dropped by Burns. Uh, he knocked over Green. He got the edge early. So if you bundle it up, I'd give him an 8.5 out of 10. But mm. as Tuffer said right at the start, you need to be a 10 out of 10 yeah. when, you, when you come to the Gabba. Yeah. So he'll learn from that. I think he'd be better if he comes out again in a, in a series or two. But look, he, him, and I thought Wood was good too. I, you know, he ran in all day. He bowled fast. You know, he didn't get the rewards. But I like the effort. I like the, I like the, just the exuberance he bowls with. That he, he's always in the contest. And I'm telling you, Warner, Warner got 90 odd, but he didn't want a piece of Wood. No. I, I'll tell you something. Um, I can remember Angus Fraser saying to me, all these Australian pitches are, are, are really quite different. And I can remember mm. Angus Fraser sitting in a bath, you know, after another long day in the field in Perth <laughs> and in Brisbane and things like that, going, I can't bowl a ball that hits the top of off stump without it being a half volley, Stuart. You know what I mean? It, it did take yeah. a very experienced man like Angus. He was going, my length, they're going over the middle stump by a foot. He's, he's going, yeah. and then I come forward and they just get on that front foot and punch me back past it, you know, back past me. So it does take time. And I think Ollie Robinson showed his class there. There a bit. He was the one shining light for me. I think he tired a bit towards the, you know, the end of the mm. day and what have you, but that's expected. But I just thought he's obviously a, a canny bowler and a quick, quick learner and a quick thinker, and he just has that ability just to run that one back in at you, Stuart, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. He's uh, he he looks like a real fine for England. Mm. He was good during the series. I, I watched uh, um, over here in the in the winter over here, but the summer for you guys back home. I thought he was good. He, he'll learn from that. Uh, I, I like the fact that he thought just got to be a bit fuller. Be prepared to get driven down the ground once or twice. 
in the hope or the I, I suppose the plan that you will get that edge give yourself a little bit more protection at cover and push your mid off back a little bit and say all right well if you want to happily drive which is the way you if you look at the dismissals at the gabba they're all caught behind the wicket there's not a, a lot of lbws or bowls because the ball bounces yes you get the odd one like green but they're all caught in that slip gully co- coordinate so um good quick learner i think uh, Again, when he gets another wicket like that, um, which you know Brisbane's a bit unique, he'll he'll learn from it, and I think he'll be better for it. Yeah, I was just looking at the uh, the scorecard for the for the England innings, and yeah, it was apart from Rory Burns clean bowled, yeah, by, by Mitchell Stark first ball. Everything else was was caught, you know, caught close to it's the wicket caught. or caught, caught behind. I, I, on the question on the question of Rory Burns, yeah. toughers, because I just wanted to talk about him um, um, and Jack Leach. Mm. You know, after with figures of one for 95 off 11 overs. I mean, it's, yeah. it's ugly, it makes ugly reading, doesn't mm. it, as yeah. a spinner? But but uh, you get the feeling that he's, he's made a quite tough stuff, Jack Leach, yep. and he's come back from this before he came back from being hammered out of the attack by Richard Pant, yep. didn't he, yep. at Chennai um, earlier in the year. But, but I wonder what Rory Burns is, is feeling like and thinking like because he's had a horror start to the Ashes. Yes, he has, and he just looked a little bit of a scrambled mind in, in the morning. His feet were all over the place. He was, you know, that, that front foot was virtually outside off stump, so anything... <laughs> the leg side of his front pad he he couldn't have got a bat on it but listen that was the first ball of the ashes and we've been saying it again you have got to be spot on you can't have a little kind of mental brain fade for a second and uh and so he's got a big role to play when he goes out and has a bat to get his confidence going, show the Aussies what he can do. He's, you know, he's got Ashes hundreds before, and so he's going to be a, a huge factor for England. And as for old Jack Leach, well, I'll tell you something. I mean, I said it yesterday. Um, you know, he, he, he got a bit of a hospital pass there, you know. 147 you've been bowled out for. So you're trying to defend that. You're a left-arm spinner. Four of the top seven are left-handers. You're playing on a green top. You know what I mean? Um, you're going to have those days. He didn't bowl the best either. He had no preparation, no warm-up games, hasn't played a test match at home for two years and all these kind of things. And it just stacked up, stacked up, stacked up, stacked up. And the Aussies aren't stupid and they went after him. It's as simple as that. He'll have better yeah, days yeah, and he'll yeah. come back. He's a phlegmatic kind of character and he's a resilient guy. So um, mm-hmm. I still think he's the best to do the job, but he's going to need looking after. And that's exactly right. Look, I, it was always going to be a tough day for him when he got the ball. Stokes got injured. It was almost like, oh, we're going to have to bowl Jack Leach here. The Aussies said, well, look, the wicket's green. It's not spinning. Anything that's up, I'm running down and hitting. And there's some of the, the first spell he bowled, he probably bowled from the wrong end because that boundary is, it, it's 60 metres. And Warner and Marnus just took to him. Oh, Rory Burns, if I'm, you know, go back to him for one second. Yes, he played, you know, he looked ugly. He's the type of player when he gets out, it's always going to look ugly because he has a, you know, it, it, he's just got one of those techniques. Yeah. And, and if I go back to the, to the late Phil Hughes, who he had a very similar, like it, it, when he got out, it looked horrible. Yeah. And everyone went, oh, look at his technique. But what he is, is a fighter. Yeah. Mm. And that's what, that's, that's the, um, the beauty of, of Burns. Yeah, he hasn't had a great start to his um, Australian test campaign. Yes, he dropped a catch, but he t- strikes me, and I don't know him at all, but he strikes me as a sort of bloke that when the fight's on, he's prepared to put his body, his head, whatever in line, just to make a stand. And that's what you want to see. Yeah, you're spot on. He is. He is. Well, the, the things, one of the things that we talked about before the series started was the things in a line, that what you wanted from the Ashes. Mm. And I said a close series. And this has not been a close test match at this stage. I mean, you know, we're not halfway through it. Well, we might be, we might be able halfway through it. We might only have a day to go, let's face it. But, you know, but theoretically in four I'm innings, we've, we've not come to the end of the second innings of the four. Um, but, but how, how can England come back tough as assuming that this one's gone? How can England come back and make it closer for the rest of the series? Well, I think that they can take a lot from that bowling performance. I know it sounds a bit weird, but I've sat, I've, and Stuart will know this. Sometimes you have days like that and you sit down there as a bowling unit and you actually think to yourself blimey O'Reilly we kind of we, we, we fought our way back into that I can't quite understand how that's happened so they've got to take that as a bowling unit forward I'm sure that Broad and Anderson now the two big guns with all the wickets will come back as well and and I think that they've just seen that this Australian batting lineup is a little bit vulnerable okay they played wonderfully well the other day Travis Head and Marnus Labashain and all this and you know and Davy Warner Davy Warner could have got out at any time you know what I mean and things like this and so they'll just be sitting there going right okay it wasn't like we didn't create chances it wasn't like we didn't beat the bat and so that's what they're going to take them forward and if they get the right toss and make the right decision at the toss and have a bit of luck go their way that's what they'll be thinking they can bolt they can get the 20 wickets 
And Stuart, we were saying before we came on air that, as I say, you were involved in that 05 series. Um, so when Glenn McGrath went went down, trod on the ball at Edgbaston, you got the call up, and that was, uh, you know, the, the the greatest series, the greatest series of all time. And you know, and, and we obviously remember it fondly for for good reasons, but actually, people remember it pretty fondly over here. The Australians, absolutely, they remember. It was disappointing we lost, uh, but you know it, that that Australian team that I sort of came into. You know, McGrath trips on the ball, you get the call. You're in, you're staying in Hendon in London. There was where I was staying, and um, can you drive up the M1 and get to Manchester? <laughs> and I'm like, really? I think I hung up. A guy called Michael Brown from Cricket Australia rang. It was early in the morning. I remember I was with my wife, and we'd uh, probably been out to dinner or something the night before, and. Um, Stuart, it's Michael Brown. Oh, yeah, whatever. Hung up on him. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, no. Green, Stuart, Michael Brown, you need to get up to Manchester. Glenn McGrath's tripped on the wall. And I'd said, oh, I saw that last night on TV. And then all of a sudden, I, I just remember turning up and the boys said, do you want to go to training? I went, yeah, all right. And they went to Manchester United football training to meet all the guys. Like, so that was my first foray into international cricket. And I was like... This is not bad, this international career thing, because there's me and Sir Alex hanging out, and I remember Ryan Giggs being there, and I remember, you know, Skulls and Roy Keane, and they're all coming up and saying, good luck in the test match, and I'm thinking, oh, uh, did I just wake up? What's going on here? <laughs> That's my first foray That's into national brilliant. cricket, followed by a press conference with about 800 cameramen taking photos. And wow. that's, they're just, uh, what a series that was, though, and, you know, it, it, it actually made for the next one. It really gave us motivation when we came back to Australia in 06, 07, um, that they, that team hadn't lost for so long. You know, Warren and McGrath and all these oh, great players, Ponting, Gilchrist, it. you know, they hadn't lost. And to actually lose, and, you know, a lot of credit needs to go to Andrew Flintoff in that series and those three bowlers, um, Jones and Hum, because they were outstanding. But Flintoff, he basically put England on his back and he carried them. Yeah. It was, uh, I mean, what, what an amazing series the 05 was. 06, 07, I mean, we got, we got absolutely stuffed. Toughest in England got absolutely stuffed. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it funny how when you come to Australia, you suddenly go down the, the we line? Um, yes. <laughs> but yes. yeah. Um, but look, it, there's, you know, it's not over yet. No, it's not. Um, we'll be. We'll be underway in uh, an hour's time um, in Brisbane, and uh, England will be up again. I mean, they are up against it. Australia, 343 for seven, uh, so the lead is 196. Tough as you're going to be there uh, during the night, aren't you, with, with Daniel Norcross, just to yeah. try and... How are you coping, by the way? We're all right. We've got plenty of wine gums, plenty of chocolate biscuits, and Good. we're enjoying the cricket, even though it's been, a, it's, been a bit of a tough, it's been a bit of a tough watch for a couple of days, but I think England are going to come back out fighting. I'm impressed that it's the wine gums, and not, <laughs> not just not just the wine. No, no, well, there you go. Don't, don't tempt me. Don't tempt me. <laughs>